When I first moved to this country, one of the things I learned quite quickly was a cup of tea can be a huge support. So, you know, when you meet a friend and you have to share something personal or something sad, that friend will always say, should we get a cup of tea? And I've really become accustomed to having a cup of tea when, I don't know, I'm not feeling sort of that great or I have to share something that's quite sad. So today my cup of tea is called love and it's a heartwarming touch of rose chamomile and lavender because today I sharing with you all something that's been really close to my heart when we first took over running Matt Britton, uh five years ago it was something that I wanted to implement here I was really excited it's my passion and Luke and I have had huge discussions recently we just have so much going on here at this at the estate. It's a 1900 acre estate. There's lots of cottages on the estate. There's the rewilding project. I mean, it's not just a historic house that we run. We run an entire estate and it it's exhausting and there's so many projects. Plus, we're filming a lot for our YouTube channel and we film at least 2 days a week and so we've made this really hard decision that in order for us to focus on other projects, I needed to say goodbye to something that's been really, really close to my heart since we renovated the house five years ago. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go outside with me and my cup of tea and share it all with you. It's been really difficult, especially, well, yeah, it's been really hard to make this decision, but I feel like we're making the right decision. But it is something that, uh, something that I have to say goodbye to. I thought I'd head down to the 18th century pool because it's kind of my happy place. So as many of you know that we cleaned and really restored our huge 18th century pool over last year. And this is a place where I swim uh, almost every single day. <laughs> Call me crazy, even in the cold uh, of winter, I'm here. But again, this is sort of my happy place. It's one of the big projects that we did last year that has, again, just given me great, great pleasure. Uh, in particular, making these floating plant islands with Raymond. And I've just recently put some new moss on four of them, um, but I'm gonna head on them now. I thought it easier for me to tell you uh, really the sad news uh, as I'm down here. Now, these can definitely hold my weight because there's a few of these I just sort of need to prune or at least just pick away at. Believe it or not, everybody, I'm not at going to fall in. And these have, unfortunately, with the wind we've recently have, ha, have had, these have tethered away. But, so I'm gonna hold on to the side, but there you go. Um, I just wanna clean out a couple here. So when Luke and I took over the running of Matt Britton Estate, one of the things that we wanted to do was have people stay in the house. And so we renovated the house we made uh, many of the bedrooms en suite and so they all have their own many of them have their own bathrooms and we decided to combine my passion of yoga with having uh, guests stay in the house for yoga retreats and I've been doing that um, I've been doing that since 2008 2008 was the first time that I had a yoga retreat and it sold out uh, immediately. It was incredible. So then I did another one and in 2018 and 2019 and even in 2020, I was able to get one yoga retreat in. And then of course, 2021, uh, we were still sort of in that pandemic, but I was able to get one yoga retreat in and then this year as well. I was able to get one. And so all in all, I've actually had eight yoga retreats here, which is crazy. And in fact, I'm going to remove that. That's good. Um, 
we'll be replanting some new ones. The YouTube channel has taken off so much that it's also taken a lot of my time. So I have made the decision to say goodbye to, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's so to say goodbye to yoga retreats here at Mapperton. Um, it doesn't mean that there won't be yoga here. Uh, we do have plans to hold some yoga classes here, but I won't be doing yoga retreats uh, anymore at Mapperton. And that's been a big decision that Luke and I had to make, and we had to really look at my energy. I mean, Mapperton just takes up so much work. Like I said, it's not just a historic house that we run here. It's an entire estate. There are many cottages on the estate. It's a, there's a rewilding project. Uh, there's um, farmland on the estate uh, that where we have visitors. You know, we have thousands of visitors a year. We have a restaurant. Uh, we have holiday um, lets or vacation rentals, but we want people to be able to stay in the house. I mean, that's why we renovated it, it five years ago, and we want people to be able to stay in the house. So Luke and I have come up with something instead, and in my view, more exciting once we said goodbye, decided to say goodbye to the yoga retreats and hello to this next new project, um, we're really, really excited to share it with you. So it's bittersweet, um, but all good things must come to an end. And when one door closes, another one opens. And this is our next chapter. And this, what we're about to do, Luke and I, is massive, massive, massive. So I think I've been able to um, it, but it's, aren't these aren't these amazing? There's like little boats. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm gonna head back inside with Luke, let him know that I've shared the news with all of you, and I'm able. I'm glad I was able to prune a little bit of these floating plant islands. We'll have to plant this water lily again. I, I had seen that it needed to be rescued, and there you go. All right, so I'll see you guys back inside because Luke and I want to share something really, really exciting with you all. We are in the drawing room about to light a fire. Now this chimney was swept this year. So when I light a flame and get it going, it should ignite well and have a good draft and the paper is quite dry the wood is quite dry fingers crossed because one of the nicest things to do at Mapton is to sit in the drawing room by an open fire I do remember this fireplace though for another reason which is that a jackdaw once upon a time made its way all the way down the chimney flew out the bottom and was swooping round this room until we managed to open a window and get it out. But, um, and I don't think any damage was done that time. We had another jackdaw that went through the canopy of the four poster bed in the great chamber above. Now, oh dear, we've got smoke coming forward. Wait a minute, is it working? Is it not working? I think it's, I think it's just about to take off if I don't touch it, but oh God, Julie's about to come and the last thing she's gonna want is a smoky room. So I'm gonna to have to run and get some bellows. Now, when the smoke starts coming out like this, the key thing to do is to get the flame going. And the best way to get the flame going is with these wonderful bellows because they then produce the heat that sends the smoke up the chimney instead of into the room. So that is suddenly doing much better. When it's windy like it is today, it also causes pressure and pushes the, the air down, which is another reason that we get smoke. But I think with a bit of bellowing, we're all there. And look at these, these are wonderful old bellows. I've no idea how old or from where, but look at the hide. 
on that, the leather. And um, these have bellowed many a Montague fire through the ages and almost caught fire themselves by the looks of it. Well, I broke the news to everybody. Um, so I thought I'd bring another cup of tea. <laughs> In my case, a cup of hot water. Yes. Like yes. Fine British Dorset <laughs> spring water heated spring. up next to the fire. There's nothing like it and you can cope with anything. That's right. But I did explain to everybody outside that yes, it's the end of one chapter, but we were going to be revealing the start of another chapter. Right? So you haven't, you haven't I haven't said news? nope, I but I just said when one door closes, another door opens, and we have an exciting door that has opened, and we're really excited about this reveal. It is sad that we are saying goodbye for the time being to yoga retreats. But there is a big happy reveal, and it is and we've been working on this for a long time. So here it is. Here it is. You are invited to come and stay at Mapperton. With us. <laughs> we are launching something called Grand Historic Tours. You can find out more at grandhistorictours.com. And, and details down below. And the itinerary. Is incredible. Is extraordinary. It starts yep. off with us. Yep. Dinner at Mapperton. Drinks. We'll, have, we'll be having, of course, drinks in the room drinks that we're in, at. In the drawing room. Yep. You will then spend the next day having a tour of the house with my father, Lord Sandwich, including looking at the journals of the first Earl of Sandwich, and he'll tell you lots of stories of our family history. My mother will be taking you on a tour of the gardens. Award-winning gardens. Well, indeed. Yeah, yeah. And she knows everything. It's incredible. And then we have some amazing excursions planned. You'll be going amazing. to our local vineyard, Furley, which is over the hill and makes fantastic uh, local British sparkling wine. They also make our uh, Montague Cuvée. <laughs> so, and you will be tasting that while you're here as well, probably in the drawing room. You will be going on a tour of Mapperton Wildlands with me where you can see the White Park cattle, the rewilding project, hopefully the beavers. Um, and then most importantly, you will also be seeing two of uh, Dorset's finest country houses. So starting off with Athelhampton, which is one of England's finest Tudor Manor houses. Incredible. Um, where you'll be going for a private tour, you'll be having lunch, you'll be having an amazing grand afternoon tea and then you'll be going to Minton, which is the home of Lord Digby. Lord Digby will be inviting you for a sumptuous three-course lunch. And again, you'll be getting a private tour of the house, which is not usually open to the public. And, and also getting a tour of the famous uh, gardens at Minton with the extraordinary uh, rhododendron. And, um, and then you will also be going to visit Lyme Regis. Yeah, which wonderful. Which is the most astonishing seaside town off the coast, west coast of Dorset. And you'll be doing some fossil hunting. It's where paleontology began. That's right. And then back here for another dinner with us. Yep, there, and there is, bring um, you know, your best outfit because there is one black tie dinner with us as well where we all can get dressed we will, up. We will all be dressing up. We'll be having drinks in here. That's right. And, um, and then there are also a couple of things with you. Yeah. So I will, of course, this is optional, but there will be on offer gentle yoga. So I'm not hanging up my yoga hat uh, just yet here at Mapperton. I will be offering gentle yoga. And for those of you who are brave enough, if you want to dip with me every morning in our 18th century pool, you are more than welcome to do a two-minute dip every morning. So bring your swimming costume or you're swimming suit. You're going to do that every day? Yes. Mind you, it is, it is October. The pool's still reasonably warm. No, so it's not he like, doesn't go in. So not like going in February. Okay. Um, it's still cold. <laughs> it's good for you. So all of the details are on grandhistorictours.com. Um, the tour is going to be led by Sam Hannay, who is absolutely magnificent and has organized the whole thing with us. And um, you will be looked after by Andrew the butler while you're here. Oh yes. Mapperton, 
and Joe Killen, who's an astonishing local chef, will be cooking up a storm for our meals That's and our right. breakfasts. And it's actually making me hungry thinking about it. I know, I know. So we're really excited. And so I think it's when one door closes, another one opens. And we feel that this is really the right decision and something that we're very, very excited about venturing into in 2023. So it may feel a bit sad for me that I've had a good run of the yoga retreats, but there's you always have to grow and evolve. And I'm really, really excited that we're doing this together and that we're going to be welcoming, um, hopefully, many of you here at Matt Britton, not just this year, but the following year and so on and so on. Brilliant. So if you're interested, do go to grandhistorictours.com. You can fill out uh, an inquiry form there and we will get back to you and um, talk about what's available. It's limited to 12 people. That's right. So I think we've got a couple of bookings already. We do. So if you're interested, you would be wise to act quickly. There is also an early bird discount through to the end of January 2023. So we really hope that some of you are able to come and all the proceeds from this tour go towards the maintenance and upkeep of Mapperton. That's so right. It's for an incredibly important cause. It is. And one, um, one of the things that we will be doing, as I said, is, is going to look at the beavers. Interestingly, somebody else has been down to the beavers recently. You don't get to see the beavers much in the daytime because they're nocturnal. But the other day, I went down with Nesta and mm -hmm. Ben, and it was broad daylight. And guess what? We spotted a couple of them. Yeah, you've got some great footage of that. Well, it's coming up. So today, Ben and I are here in the beaver enclosure because I've heard recently um, that the beavers have been out during the daytime. Um, now that it's winter, I'm guessing they're sort of coming up a bit earlier to get the sun, um, but I haven't been here in five, six weeks and I've still not seen the beavers. <laughs> Um, so hopefully, I'm hoping that they'll come out for us today. Yeah, hopefully. We've, this is sort of the time I'm seeing yeah. them, sort of two, two o'clock now, and uh, I, saw, I saw the female just on the other side of the pond just having a bit of a feed on, take, stripping all the bark today. off. Uh, well, two, days two days ago. Days ago. So, yeah. so yeah. yeah, they're a bit more active now. Yeah, in the, in yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll see something. Um, and then you'll see quite a lot of them. They're, they're starting to yeah. take some of this hazel out here. Yeah. Um, and they've actually made their first dam on, the, on their own as well. Oh, so really? we'll go and have a look oh, at that okay. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So you start, start to see just a bit more though. They're just, yeah. Just having a nibble each there. Going, going what are they doing with the um, frozen pond? Are they just so walking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ben has just spotted, we think, the male Yeah, beaver. I think it's the male. Yeah, it's just a little um, bit smaller, a bit darker. And yeah. the female, females are a, a lighter brown and she's yeah. a bit chunky. Um, but yeah, he's just, just slowly come down the hill um, and then back into the sort of back, back end of the lodge yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if we, if we move up a little bit more, yeah, um, exactly. I can't see a silhouette, but there's a bit of vegetation moving. So if we no, slowly yeah. creep up a little bit more. So we just, we've, just, we've just seen the male. The male's just come down the bank. He's just coming to the back side of the pond. He's just hanging out where there's a little bit of unfrozen water. You can just hear it chewing. Yeah. He's just feeding on a bit of bark at the moment. They make a great sign when they're chewing. <laughs> so if when when you walk along here, just have a have a look down. But this is sort of where they've been using the toilet. Yeah. Um, so if you find like a little neat clump under the water, give me a shout. We'll go and have a look at it. probably 15 meters only. Um, she does get extremely close to her. Um, and we saw her fell uh, a hazel tree. It's quite amazing her just there up on her um, legs uh, trying to get this tree down and eventually it did come down. Um, so yeah, no, it was 
Yeah, it was, it was, I don't. I didn't think we were actually gonna. The, the, how quickly we saw them as them coming in. Yeah. We've only been, yeah. really been here yeah. about half an hour, haven't yeah. we? So, yeah. um, to, actually, to actually, to actually, one of the most amazing oh, life yeah. experiences. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And just, yeah, just definitely. watching her just balance on the tail and push herself up. Yeah. To get higher up into yeah. the, into yeah. that hazel as well. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was incredible. But yeah, it's, just standing here gives you a good view of just what they have done in. Mm. Three, three months, three, four months now they've been here, haven't they? So, so yeah, so yeah. Uh, now they've, they've almost just started pe penciling this, this here. So it's, they, it won't be too long till that that falls over. Yeah, um, they've they've It'll look done quite different when that one comes down, won't it? Yeah, yeah, they've done yeah. the odd odd one or two here as well. Um, but yeah, that's um, they're they're still fairly active now. Um, yeah. No signs of slowing up. Um, but and Ben, why why are they out in the daytime now? Do you think? I think it's just because we're getting, you know, it was, it was minus seven this morning, so it's it's so it's so cold for them. So I think they just want to come out, get a bit of get a bit of sort of heat and a bit of sun on their backs, um, before you know before they go back in and you know go back to work. I'm still seeing them on the trail cameras at sort of midnight yeah, around around yeah. that time as well, working and out in the water. So it's um, you know it gives yeah, them a yeah. bit of time to feed and you know you can sort of conserve their energy a yeah. bit as well. So yeah. And and why was she taking down that hazel? What do you think she was going to do? With I don't. I, I would have said they probably just would have been storing it for feed. So they probably she'll probably come back um, tonight, and then she'll probably take off a couple more bits, and then she'll drag it back to back towards the lodge. And then um, what I have been seeing them doing is is feeding just outside the lodge. Okay, yeah. um, so they'll yeah. they'll sort of cut it into small little lengths, and then it is literally like a little process. Yeah. So they're eating away, and then they'll just sort yeah. of twist it around and go again. It's um, it's quite cool to watch. Um, but yeah, that's that's what that's yeah. what I've seen. And you can see in the pond here, you can see all these white sticks where they've just stripped up yeah, all the bark yeah. and they've just left them yeah. um so yeah so, and you do you do find just piles of sticks as well where they've been feeding so yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah amazing well i think i think they put on an extraordinary show yeah, yeah 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 definitely we should probably leave them be now. i think so yeah <laughs>